I'm Noelle. I've worn a few different hats in my career. In my career in tech, I spent 10 years as a data scientist working with companies, both large and small, on their AI efforts. I then spent several years in product, working in both the product and data lifecycle. And then I currently work at Datakind, which is a nonprofit organization. And I help lead teams that build uh, both data science products and build um, data science solutions for social impact organizations globally. It turns out that pretty much all companies have the same types of struggles and aspiration when it comes to AI and data. And right now, there is a lot of hype around adding AI features to your products, and we are all feeling that pressure. So however, instead of rushing to a solution in the name of innovation, I'd like all of us to take a giant step backwards and figure out the best way to actually align what AI can do with product strategy to make the best plan moving forward. Okay, so last year I did say vehemently that you cannot just add AI to a product, and I still want to disabuse people of the idea that you can without any foresight or any forethought or real effort, just sprinkle AI into a product and make that be successful. It is simply not that easy. Anyone else who tells you otherwise is selling something. I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm simply here to be your storytelling guide on the way to AI greatness. Figuring out the best way to leverage AI in your products is a process. And it would be great if all of us could work on products that are AI-centric to begin with or data-driven from the start of it. But honestly, that's just not where a lot of us are. So you can actually add AI to your products and reap the rewards of that innovation. But you have to be willing to put in the work to do it right. This, takes, this requires taking an honest look at what your product is and does well understanding what AI can and cannot do with the data that you have available, and then being strategic about what you can do in a reasonable amount of time. And if you are feeling the pressures of your board or executive team to add more AI, the answer isn't to play a game of improv where you say yes and then figure it out later, you know, and you, or you rush to the path of least resistance just so you can check off that box. The best response is to present a plan that shows that you've given thoughtful consideration of what's possible in the context of your product and how you would mitigate potential failures. All right. And speaking of failures, uh, let's start by talking about some things that may trip you up first. All right. The most obvious non-starters that I've seen for building products with AI are that you have no data. Your products have no data instrumentation whatsoever. Or there is no defined value or ownership for AI in your organization. Or your short-term product roadmap includes things like addressing a massive amount of technical debt, scaling, or big platform migrations. And if any of those things are true, your energy is honestly best spent addressing those things first before trying to add an AI capability to it. Go build a good foundation. AI can exist without data, and it's really hard to build upon a product that's a moving target. In addition to it being really hard to build AI in a product that needs a lot of work, just adding AI to a bad product isn't going to make it a good one. Okay? AI cannot fix fundamental problems with your product. AI can be magical. It's not that magical, though. And we all have seemingly thrown out practices of good building good products with the rise of generative AI. But we're better than this. All right? So if you're here, please do not pass go. Don't collect $200. Go fix what's wrong with your product first. Just because you can doesn't mean that you should. AI should not be a solution in search of a problem. AI should accelerate pre-existing user pain points or help solve the pre-existing user pain points or opportunities. AI can just as easily improve your product and your product experience as it can expose your flawed understanding of what it is and its purpose. And a pattern that we've all seen in tech is companies rushing to adopt recent product trends in this for the sake of parity in the market, but that ultimately is going to be ill-fitting or an unsustainable choice for them. Quite frankly, it's a waste. It's a waste of time, it's a waste of money, it's a waste of energy. And I'm of the opinion that a lot of the things that we see today probably fall under this category. And I know this was mentioned at one of the keynotes, you know, how many AI assistants don't actually help their customers? Right? Is that, are they actually useful? Could those product teams have prioritized something else, AI powered or otherwise, that would have? And who decided it was a good idea anyway? Right. OK, so should you AI? Right. If you have a clear vision 
for how AI can transform your product in a meaningful way, and that vision aligns with what AI can realistically do, then you absolutely should, right? If you can use AI to highlight what is already your unfair advantage, then you should. And if you know that you have data that's being currently underutilized in your product, you probably should. Okay, let's assume that you should. How do you get started? Okay. First up, let's talk about your product strategy. You have to know where you are before you can plan where you're going next. That's true of product. It's kind of true of life in general. So take a look at where your product is today and identify areas where it's currently lacking. You can start with some basic questions. What are your strategic product goals? Where are you playing? How are you winning? What is your company's expertise and unfair advantage? What are you known for? What do your customers expect from you? AI implemented well will enhance your product strategy, not distract from it. Remain focused on what it is you do and consider how to play to your strengths. Is your product ready to benefit from AI? And this question is very deliberately product-centric and not AI-centric. And when you consider your current product strategy and your user's pain points, are there things that you're addressing or building where using an AI solution may make sense? All right. So examples of some pain points that have potential for benefiting from AI are, are things really hard because something is manual and it would benefit from some automation? Is there a process that's tedious and time consuming for your users that they would just rather skip all the way through? Or are users not as engaged in your product and they need more guidance? Do you already have a plan in place for addressing those problems? Are you happy with that plan? Maybe consider whether using AI might be a good way to go with that. Okay, so now that you've identified some pre-existing needs in your products that AI could potentially help solve, let's switch gears and talk about AI. You can do a similar exercise with AI as we did with product. Okay, where you are today with AI and data affects where you can realistically go next. Okay. AI strategy is more than a singular AI feature on your product or a handful of AI features, right? AI should have its own purpose and goal in your organization. What does your company want to do with AI in general? Is there a plan? Is, has there been a decision? Has that been shared? And also remember that AI is more broad than just the generative AI models and solutions that are so popular right now. And if you were here for Eric's talk just before this, he had a great slide about this. Right? Machine learning, predictive analytics, statistics, all of those things that you can do with data are no less powerful in their own right and are part of the big umbrella. There's a wide range of what your AI strategy could look like. It could be AI to boost internal productivity, AI that aids in decision making or workflows, AI that enhances the usage of products by way of customization, all the way to the AI being the product itself that you're selling. But if your AI strategy isn't clear and there's no owner, that leaves the door open for people to just go rogue with their AI ideas and implementations. And it might be fun to be an AI cowboy, um, but that isn't the best way to build a good product or a sustainable business. But if your company is new to AI and is exploring AI, that is still okay and in and of itself is not a non-starter, but it just means that you may have some foundational work ahead of you. All right, this is one of my favorite soapboxes to stand on, which is do you have enough data and the corresponding infrastructure to support AI? You should take stock of it. Is your product instrumented to capture data that's actually relevant for the AI? Just because you have data doesn't necessarily mean it's the right data that you need. Is that data being stored anywhere? Have you taken a look at the data itself and do you understand it? Do you have an existing data-driven feedback loop in place for your product? If you don't have the answers to any of those questions, go find the person in your organization who does. And if either the data or the infrastructure is lacking, who's gonna be willing to invest the time and the money to fix it? There are a lot of places out there that will sell you everything in an AI pipeline from the data and the tools to the UI, the models, et cetera. But if you're really trying to innovate, you're going to want to create some of that yourself. You're not going to want to completely outsource your innovation to another company. There's a real risk in only leveraging someone else's technology, like using only external data that you did not capture and you do not know the assumptions that were made when making it, or calling an API and depending on the capabilities and limitations of another company altogether. What happens when your access changes or it ceases? What happens when your AI goes unchecked? Right? Building major components on your business on the back of another company leaves you vulnerable to many external factors, just as, like mergers or leadership changes, drastic changes in direction for the other organization. So something just to keep in mind. Okay. Right. So 
So we talked about product and we talked about AI. So let's bring all those things together. Being innovative with AI is one part about the AI itself and one part about the product that then surrounds it. If you pull out then those strategic product goals for your AI-ready products, think about what is it that you're solving for? Which problems or pain points are you addressing that AI would be enhancing? What would leveraging AI in those places ultimately help you achieve? Right. The magic happens when it turns out what you wanted to solve, those pain points you want to solve, have an AI solution that will, is significantly better than what your initial solution would have been or what exists currently in your product. Right. There are some things that AI is really, really good at. Right? Recognizing patterns in data, summarizing large amounts of data, classifying things, doing automation of tasks. If you go through all of your pain points, can you flag the ones where AI can actually immediately alleviate the user pain points that you have? On the other hand, AI cannot universally generate reliable insights on predictions on a topic like a magic crystal ball. I don't know if anybody has experienced this where people are like, just add chat GPT. That's, that's the solution to it. AI cannot know with absolute certainty what a user is feeling or what they'll do next. Right? And again, figuring all of this out is a process and it should involve a collaboration between your product teams and your AI and your data teams. The end result should be a short list of ideas that have been validated as feasible and compatible by both product and AI. In design, there's a phrase, go wide, then decide. Right? And so in the previous step, we had generating all of these ideas for AI, solution. You'll, AI solutions. You'll still need to decide which ones to prioritize and which ones are the best ideas. So how do you know if your new AI solution idea to your problem is a good idea or a bad idea? So a friend and former colleague of mine, Martina, came up with this framework to use the guardrails of creativity, pragmatism, and rigor. So if you have products that are in the sweet spot in the middle where all three overlap, the things like your user experience is really delightful, the product serves a purpose that encourages user engagement, and the AI is adequately vetted and responsible. It's great, that's what you want. Right? But if you have products that are too far into any edge of this chart, you're probably going to run into problems for different reasons. For example, if you apply rigor and creativity to a product without any pragmatism, this is where you're going to end up with like a CEO pet project. Right? So the AI model could be super accurate and it could be the product capability could be really amazing, but it could be way too expensive to run. Or it turns out that no one actually wanted to buy it. You were only doing it because an executive wanted it. Or, as another example, if you wanted to apply pragmatism and rigor but no creativity, you'll end up with products that are just awful to use, just unpleasant. You know, think of the products that you have to use and they work really well, but you like really loathe to actually use them. Those would be at the top. So find your ideas that are in the sweet spot. And if an idea is lacking in one area, ask yourself if that's fixable. All right, assuming you went through that exercise, your short list of AI solutions now are also sound ideas. Great, but are they valuable? A valuable problem is typically valuable and usable for your intended customers, can scale into a sustainable business model, and can be profitable. Is a solution valuable to your users? You know why your users are using your product. You understand how your product helps or hurts them. If you're gonna implement the solution, are you actually reducing their work or actually helping them? Or are you inadvertently make it making it worse? Are you adding to their cognitive burden? Is the solution valuable to your business? You know, I recommend evaluating whether or not you can quickly and cheaply figure that out. What does it cost to build and run? Are there any trade-offs? How will this help your product adoption? AI is an investment. So you really need to consider if a solution is a valuable business prop. If you want to shape your own AI destiny, you're going to need to bring a human in the loop to do some validation and weigh the risks against the benefits. We all hear about the benefits of AI, but what are we doing about doing our due diligence on the risks? Who exactly is telling us that the AI is giving correct or ethical answers? The AI itself? What's the risk you run with your users, your product, or your company if your AI is just a little bit wrong? What's the risk if it's really, really, really wrong? As your storytelling guide, I want to remind you that AI is not infallible. It is plenty fallible, especially the further away you get from what is typical or average in your data and into the edge cases. The appearance of good results, like models that are instantaneously generated, beautiful graphs, 
a well-written, what seems like a well-written paragraph isn't actually the same as a model that is well fit to your data or insights that were crafted using subject matter expertise. So when you use AI, you should have someone who can tell the difference between what only appears to be valuable, actionable insights and results from your AI and what truly is. Because once you put the AI into your products, regardless if you built every single little bit of it from scratch yourself or completely outsource the whole thing, you are gonna be held responsible for, by your users for the results. Right? And you run the real risk of going viral on Reddit for the wrong reasons if it's bad. Data scientists, designers, practitioners of any kind don't just supply the working products. They bring their expertise and critical thinking abilities. They are the ones who will be able to tell you when things aren't working the way that it should. And if you remove those people from the equation, you're setting yourself up for failure. Okay, so by now you have identified your target products, the pain points that your users have that you want to address, your solutions to fix those things, which AI solution and the data that you're going to use to do that and how you're gonna get at those things, where in the loop you're adding a human and how you're gonna show that all of this is a valuable business proposition. One last thing that I would add to your plan is a realistic timeline. How do your ideas fit into your products as they exist today or three months from now? Do you have capacity to actually build it? The thing that you're trying to propose if you need to acquire or curate the data in order to get started, how far does that actually push out your timeline? So similar to my earlier recommendation not to build AI in a product without a proper foundation, you cannot start without any data. And you also do not want to be building AI on a far out version of a product that does not exist yet. Who's to say that the future version of that product is still the plan when the time comes and it'll actually be there. Right? When you present a plan to your exec team, your board, et cetera, you should have confidence that you could actually deliver on it. Okay. In summary, being innovative requires being smart and deliberate about both your product and AI and figuring out where the two best complement each other. And as a final thought, I wanted to leave you with some alternative titles this talk had in its workshopping days. Um, the first was, combining AI with your product strategy requires a deeper understanding of both. And the other two are a little more clickbaity, warning you now. 10 steps to building AI products. The first one will surprise you. It's not actually AI. And are you being innovative or are you, be, are you just building garbage faster? Decide that one was probably too spicy for uh, a title. And with that, thank you for letting me be your guide today. <laughs>